So this is a eight-year-old cattle dog that jumped off the second floor balcony and has suffered a pretty catastrophic uh, carpal injury. So we're going to arthrodes it. Um, can we, instead of that one, can we just drag that picture over and look at the CC of the abnormal leg? And so our plan is to use a 3527 uh, long VI locking pancarpal plate and our incision length. It's the longest of the plates, is it? It's quite short at the top. Uh, and the incision length will be guided by the size of the plate, which is going to end about here and extend to about here. So we'll do a slightly medial incision. You want to hold that? Okay. So we can see our extensor tendons coming into view on our radius, which will ultimately be sectioned. Um, our radiocarpal joints there, so we'll do a medial carpal incision and extend that down over our joint. So it's a bit of a scorched earth procedure. all the edema within the tissues because of the injury. And so we're gonna get the plate on a metacarpal three. And so these are our extensor tendons going on to three and four which will get elevated for exposure of the joint. capsule and edematous tissue over the radiocarpal or antibrachiocarpal joint. These extensor tendons coming down onto three and four. So radiocarpal bone into view, you can see that catastrophic carpo metacarpal injury to two, so that toe is quite unstable, so we might try and get some fixation across that to add to stability and comfort. Did he? Great, good job Taryn. Just remember when we go up to the shoulder, it may not work. Would it work? Would it work in the shoulder? No, not at all. Yeah. It's lower than the shoulder. Unless I really screw up my nose. Yeah, it's just like that. Yeah, I don't so that's yeah, digit no. two, that's three where we want to go. So we'll just expose that sensor tendon there. So our ulnar carpal bones coming into view just down there. Six, three, five, nine, five, 
there. And then we might go down a little bit lower for our plate position. Should get most of what we need for that exposure. So we're just making sure our incision sits on the far side of where our plate will sit so that we don't have tension over our closure. And then that's going to be the toe we're shooting for. So that's two, that's three. So that's where we're going to ultimately place our plate. Make sure we've got good exposure of that, which we do. more than what we need that's good all right so we'll do some burring now stop over all right so suck and flush when we're ready yep suck so not where i'm gonna be yep yep get flush suck flush suck Suction in the hole now. And then our retractor between those spaces turn sideways, create some space. Suction in there. Suck on the hole, great. Suction. Suction. So that we can get up in the on a carpal bone space, fix the bars. A little bit down the side of it. Nine. out that joint space while we're here. Just hold off opening it, Taryn, for now. Suction. So just here now. So, so carpo metacarpal spaces.
What a view. What a view. Okay, mate. Yeah. So that nice white hyaline cartilage coming off an exposure of the subchondral bone and you can see it's bleeding and oozing. So that bleeding tells us that we're going to get fusion. Pretty horrible. And then we just need, so that's a radio antibrachiocarpal, that's the carpometacarpal, I think. Unless that's, no, okay. So that's the intercarpal row, where it articulates with the radiocarpal bone, and then we've actually got our carpometacarpal in here. So as soon as we start debriding, that's gonna turn into just mush, but we need to get some fusion there as well. see that space in there and those articular surfaces there so there are our numbered carpal bones so we need to ride that space as well we'll go down to our smaller burr so we don't obliterate what's remaining of those little bones. What a mush, what a mush. And that, that'll be the other numbered on the medial side. Can I a new pair of gloves, please? Grab there, yeah, high, yeah. Thanks, mate. Let's try and grab the cuff with it. See the, the gown, the oh, yeah. gown cuff, yeah. Get going a bit more. Yeah, there I go. Great, thank you. And I'll grab, oh, I just made a hole in one. All right, so I might start with a, um, a 3 5, I think, stitch. And so, in this plate, we'll probably put the radiocarpal in first, which will be a 3-5 locking. How do you decide if you want to do like a bottom graft? Oh, we're going to graft it, yeah. yeah. yeah it's mandatory to graft oh. a pancarpal arthrodesis. We'll just do that later, or else we'll lose the bone graft in the process of the lavaging and plate application. So it'll be the, it'll be the last step before closure and there'll be enough space to insert it because it's so mushy. So that's gonna be the toe that we wanna end up on. So that runs down the shaft of that toe. And then we sit that onto our radiocarpal and then bring that up and just make sure that it's gonna look straight and I think it will. So we might grab a couple of needles to mark out 
metacarpal 3 distally. So that's between metacarpal 2 and 3. That'll be between 3 and 4. And if we sit our plate down the guts of that, and then look at where it's going to hit the radiocarpal, and also sit on the radius, that looks about right there. And then we'll digitally reduce the radiocarpal bone as close as we can get it. And that looks pretty good. We'll just triple check we're down the middle of that, which we are. Take that. Two eight drill bits. a nice solid bit of radiocarpal bone which is good. Put a 22 in the stitch. And so we'll compress the radius towards the radiocarpal, compressing the antibrachiocarpal joint, then we'll compress the metacarpal towards the carpal, which will compress our intercarpal space. adequate for now so. and then before we commit any further we'll just make sure that the legs gonna be straight There's always a little bit of external rotation that happens, which I think is normal. They compensate with rotation of the foot. So we get the 2-5 cortical at this point. Just make sure we're going to be in the middle of the bone at the top. compress our distal compression screw. Do you want to drill that stitch? Just don't push in too hard. Yep. Okay. Yep. Go again. Good. Go for it. Nearly through, yep, great. All right, we'll get eight. And we've chosen to do this one over that one because if we're not happy with our alignment, we can fix it. But if we've done the most extreme one, we might have less flexibility with changing alignment. 22. And that compares favorably with our templating. So 22, three, five cortical, depth gauge out. Tighten this in compression. It's compressing our anti carpal as best as it can. And the plate's close to the middle of the bone, which is good. Foot's going to be nice and straight. Good reason why we drape the elbow in and have clear foot wrap, so that looks good. So what we'll do now is we'll focus on our most distal metacarpal compression screw so that we don't run the risk of uh, being eccentric and creating a stress riser. So get the two mil drill bit ready. Let's check where the mill of our toe is. Need some light.
that's the space, that's solid, that's off the side, so we need him to come around lateral a little bit. It should have come around the side switch with the homing and the drill. Hold that for me. So that's on the space between three and four. That's in the space suction. You can see the bone there. It looks like we're pretty close to the centre. More hands would be good. So that's in the center of the diaphysis. Yes, yeah, they aligned great. So that felt very much dead center. You don't always get the two cortices otherwise. Measures as 11. Are we going to put a 12 in? Alright. Twelve. Take that out for me, Will. Yeah, thank you. Two seven. I'll just slide down with this to get that tendon out of the way. There you go. Gorgeous. So that's pulled the toe to the plate, which is good. These plates are already a little bit offset, so should create that bend that it needs. That all looks pretty good, so it's just a paint by numbers now. We'll go, um, we'll keep the 2.7 on and we might uh, compress this proximal one a bit further. So eccentric within a whole saline. One cortex, two cortex. Measures nine, so I'll put a I'll put a twelve in. I think here. So twelve again, two seven cortical. And so as this one approaches getting tight, we're going to loosen the distal one up, so we can create some more interfragmentary compression. So loosen that up a bit. Allow the plate to move. Compress this one. See the plate slide. Retighten this one. Good, and then we'll put a 3-5 cortical at the top. And we'll do the same thing. We'll try and walk that and compress that a bit as well. Let's get that it out of the way and we're just slightly off center so we'll direct it marginally back towards the lateral side two cortices so 16 we'll put an 18 in So same deal, we'll loosen this one a little bit as we tighten the next one. Just to allow for a bit more compression. Does the plate stay under Yeah, what do you think? What would be the decision making around keeping the plate versus not keeping the plate? Yeah, I guess so if it's the place causing a problem you take it out, but 
wouldn't electively remove the implant just just because. Um, you know, union takes a long time with arthrodesis, so you know, it probably takes four to five months before you could comfortably remove a plate in most cases. Um, and there's a risk of refracture and things if the plate comes off. Um, but you're right, yeah, so the plate's problematic, like infection being the most common, then we would look to manage the infection in the first instance, and then if it wasn't resolving, take the implant out, but it can be a bit of a can of worms. Some people take them out just to get more comfort. They think the implant might be a bit irritating, but you know, any subsequent surgery with any scenario is not benign, right? There's always risk attached to it. So you would only be trying to, you know, solve something really at that point, a problem. So I'll put two lockers in. You got the saline. Okay. Cortex one, cortex two. Cortex one, cortex two, a bit soft down there. We're getting close to metaphyseal bone. So that measures 16. That measures 16, we'll put two 18s in. Two. So I've got two seven locking now. So these locking pan carpal plates haven't been out for a long period, so we don't know if the infection rate's any different with them. Stay on. One cortex. Two cortex. One cortex, two cortex. Go fourteen. Fourteen. Followed by fourteen. Seven. I'll power them in. Switch. So I think that's nice and straight, which is job one sorted. And we'll get something attached to this toe. Yeah. So what can we do? So we could put another plate, that would be one option. We could put a screw. Try for a screw, that might be the simplest way. So we'll get a, I think we'll just do a two mil drill bit stitch.
we'll put that on someone holding that so we can get perspective on where we're going. Thirty-eight. What have we got in there? Oh, thirty-six or forty. Bargain. Oh, thirty-six might be adequate. it needs uh, I'm not so much worried about it protecting the arthrodesis I just want it to stop this toe from moving too much which I think it's accomplished I think it's engaged some of those bones so we'll leave it as it is and we'll go and get our bone graft all right just hold that well all right so yeah do you want to give some of that methadone Tarrant that's the other finger just push down there So just feel for the front of the shoulder, humeral glenoid. And then we just divide the planar muscles, which always move depending on the position of the leg when it's flexed up. Gelpies. Another pair of gelpies. And we just keep going down until we find our super and infraspinatus tendon of insertion. So that's our supra and that's our infra. So we're just going to go right there and we'll use these gelpies to keep all the graft from getting caught up on the soft tissues. So right there will be our target. Cortical hole, and a good size curette.
Get some um, 2O PDS, 3O monocrawl, uh, 4O monocrawl. Did you make a cut through that tendon to get to them? No, so we're behind the Supra and in front of the Infra. So we just had to cut through the soft tissue so it didn't get caught up, but no, we haven't, haven't interfered with any of his tendons. We don't want to have that effect on his function. A bit awkward just because he's sort of rolled over and flexed up if he was sitting in a neutral position it would be a bit simpler but to identify that anatomy so you can see the size of that's bigger than a 4.5 drill bit it's quite important to have a nice nice size curette and just keep going till you're not getting much back out Done. Come back to that later. So you can relax and we'll close this up. Give it a big flush and suck, and then we'll drop the graft in and suture close. joint spaces and all these locations for our graft to go in. So last suck. No more sucking at this point. Slide so that in. Yeah, we're just about to close. And so some people like to put the graft in while they're doing the surgery so that there's like a space to put it in, but I think I just don't understand conceptually how you preserve the graft with all the manipulation that follows and sucking and lavaging. And I think if there's no space for it to go in, that's good. <laughs> you've got more likely to get bone union if you've got a small space. So you can see they're pretty good, pretty good close, pretty good coverage with that graft. Should do us. So I'll put our tendon over the top as best as we can. metal work there in such a superficial area we won't ever get it that well closed. Cut that out. These tendon, tendons obviously don't have much of a functional role at this point. Okay, any questions, Will?
You don't have to. No, <laughs> that's have one right to that's all I know. So we won't manage him with any kind of casting or anything like that outside of a soft padded dressing for the first two weeks while the wound heals, just to avoid any self mutilation or um, wound issues that might follow due to edema and swelling and that sort of stuff. The sort of evidence for any form of carptation long term and these is severely lacking and so we want to keep it as simple for the client and the dog as possible. Reading uh, your paper, it looked like it was quite a wide range of like the complication rates. Yeah, and I guess that was what I wanted to show in that paper. Oh, I think that that's real. Yeah, it's not the real numbers. Like I tell clients that one third of these dogs are going to have a significant problem. It's always manageable, but. Uh, it's hard to see how, with that consistency of evidence, it would be lower. I guess will locking plates change it? You know, should we move towards titanium implants? Um, I went through a period where I tried to do them sort of minimally invasively, like with little incisions and orthogonal plating, thinking that maybe the post-operative instability was the problem, but uh, that didn't seem to change the outcome and it definitely made the journey more challenging at surgery. But yeah, one of, I guess one of the mechanisms or rationale for that high infection rate, I think is persistent instability. And you know, you've got half a dozen little bones, more than half a dozen little bones within the carpus, as well as, you know, four metacarpals, a radius and an ulna that you're trying to keep still. And you know, don't put fixation across all those bones. We just put this big bridge across, across you know, kind of three of them. So I think that's that's the fundamental problem, and um, not not sure what the solution is. Maybe a medial plate would be a good idea. It's tight. So again. Work tendon that's intact. Just like rest above the plate. Yeah, it'll just sit sit there really. So you've got a lot of tension there because of the post-op swelling. So it's proving troublesome. Yeah, I mean, you could theoretically resect the tendons, like, so at some point they're going to have to be sitting somewhere. Let's cut that there. Hold that over there for me, Will.
All right. Pretty tight. How long has the surgery been? 45. Okay. So there are some plates that are marketed as castless plates and they have more screws and wider and engaged multiple metal carpals, but there's actually no evidence to suggest that these standard straight style plates need a cast. And I think if you speak to people that are doing the surgery, they're not seeing short-term mechanical failures. Um, the issues are infection and delayed arthrodesis and implant failure with cyclic fatigue and you know, having a cast on for six weeks doesn't reliably change that and it definitely increases morbidity and cost and complications I think. So yeah, if you see people put a cast on it's sort of dogma and antiquated kind of approaches rather than evidence-based. So if we were really worried about the pressure and the tension on closure, we could do a releasing incision, but I think um, it'll settle in 48 hours. So we will put a pressure bandage on to help out. Morning. Can I get some um, 4 0 skin suture, please?
ear right to close the shoulder sit. Oh, hey mate, yes, she's a staple that we have left. And um, it's okay, one, one layer is fine on top of that, underneath that. Alright, thanks guys.